keep going. Uh, I don't really have any specific craft usage plan besides having a pillow around. So if you have something to get nice and cozy on, just come and find a comfortable seat. Of course, sitting in a chair is um, always an option that just feels better in your body. Um, I, so I have this friend who is in nursing school and working full time right now. And every time he starts to get really frazzled, I'll be like, what have you been doing? for joy lately and he is like nothing I'm completely out of energy I have no idea here we go so I like I have no energy to handle anything else I have no interest in getting more into my joy factor because I'm just completely overwhelmed like I don't work out anymore I'm not eating well and I'm just totally depleted and I was thinking about um and how the chakras align. And it's interesting if you, like the root chakra is your foundation, like um, your basic safety and just knowing that you're well and that you're steady. And then right above that is your pleasure center. This is our creative area. The sacral chakra, the Svadhisthana chakra is where all of that like yummy, delicious joy stuff is centered. It's where we have a lot of feeling. It's where we have our creativity. It's like the ice cream sundae of the body or of our of our focus is like right in here. And above that is our energy center and our powerhouse, which is right about the, um, the solar plexus area or kind of this very bottom point of the ribs. And if you think of the, the chakras are kind of aligned, kind of like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, where you have that like base level, like you have to be, you have to have like food and shelter and then safety and then community. And then you start to like level up into higher levels of consciousness and the chakras kind of work the same way. I have to know that I'm safe. And then before I can have a lot of energy and power, I also have to have joy. I also have to have pleasure. It's that whole filling up our cup because you can't pour from an empty cup kind of thing. So we're gonna do a lot of twists and stuff today. We're gonna to work into some hip opening and I really encourage as always to try to find a way to make that hip opening really yummy on you, to find the twist to be really yummy on you. If there's a pose that we're doing and you're like, oh, I like this other version better, do the other version or hang out, wait, stretch another body part, whatever it is. Let this practice be a building of joy for you, especially when you know, there are a lot of ways in which we used to think that we would find joy in the world and in you know, the coming weeks and the holidays. Find a way to be joyful even here. Find a way to find that pleasure wherever we're at. Yeah. Take your index finger and your thumb together in the squishy spot at the bottom of your thumb, bring it to the center of your forehead and brush outwards towards your temples a few times. And then moving from the sides of your nose out to your temples along your cheekbones. Going from the temples down to your chin along the jawline. And from the sides of the nose down to your chin along your laugh lines. Taking your fingertips underneath and behind your ears, feeling from the soft spot upwards towards the bony spot, lifting up from that point. I'm trying to keep that lift, even after you drop your hands down comfortably into your lap. And as you build up a steady, even flow of inhale and exhale through the nose, considering what you can do in this practice to find joy and pleasure in it. Maybe some way in which you will reward yourself after practice for doing this good work, coming again to the practice, having the tapas, and then perhaps there's something, you're going to go take a bath or make that ice cream sundae. And take a big 
big breath in through your nose, big exhale through the mouth. Again, like that. For three, always. Uh, Start to unwind your legs. If you're if up, up in a chair, just stay up in a chair. And get these legs out in front of you. Just bring them someplace that's kind of comfortable. If you can bring the feet in a little bit closer to your hips, if that still feels good in your seat, go ahead and do that. Take your left hand over towards your right knee and then put your right hand on your belly. And as you twist a little bit over towards the right side, can you make your, your belly really rigid? You get a lot of like firmness, like you're trying to like chisel your abs or whatever kind of imagery helps you to feel like you're very strong and solid there. Take another inhale, strong and solid, and then let the belly soften as you exhale. See if you're able to twist a little bit differently, if you're able to twist a little bit more. Maybe you really feel the heart turn out more towards the right. Take another inhale, feel the backs of your ears lift up. Stay there as you exhale, get a little softer, and then release that twist. And move to the other side. So take your uh, right hand to the left knee and then the left hand onto your belly. And I know we kind of have already established it feels better when we're squishier, but make that rigidity, make that strong. It's like laying bricks inside of your belly, inside of your torso, noticing what it feels like to twist with that resistance. And then when you let the softness come in, the fluidity, the ease in that center space, Notice the change as you open more into the twist, letting your belly fall back towards the spine, the organs get squishier. One more exhale. And then release your twist. I'm gonna take both hands towards the lower legs, so towards the shins or just resting on your knees if that's what's more comfortable for you to reach. Get a little bit of movement through your spine. Maybe you're taking some cat and cow, lifting the heart up, lifting the chin and then rolling back. Maybe you take a couple of stirrings around in your body. Just move in a way that feels good to you. If you've been circling in one direction, maybe Make sure that you circle over towards the other side as well. And then when you get back to the center, when you feel like your movements have been pretty evened out, take an inhale, reach both of your arms up. And as you exhale, twist over towards the right side. We'll stay there just as you exhale, softening the belly. And then inhale, take them back up towards the front and exhale, twist over towards the left. Inhale to the center. Exhale, twist to the right. Inhale to the center, lift up. Exhale, twisting over towards the left. One more round. Inhale to the middle. Exhale, twist. Inhale to the middle. Exhale, twist. And then inhale to the middle. This time, release your hands down. You're going to bring your hands onto your knees or your shins or your feet. And just draw yourself forward into a fold that feels good on your body. So maybe you're just going to relax your chin because you don't want to go too far. Your body doesn't want you to go too far. Maybe you really do feel like you want to come forward over those legs. Come into a place that feels good to you, some place you can breathe. And then if more space happens to open up when you're being softer with yourself, you can always move into it if that seems like a good plan. Stay here for about two more full, deep, slow breaths. When 
and start to lift yourself back up. We're gonna come onto our hands and knees. So if you wanna bring anything underneath your knees to get them um, a little bit more supported, go ahead and do that. If you need any extra cushions underneath your knees. And then start to move through cat and cow. So you'll drop your belly down, look up, roll the shoulders back. As you exhale, round the spine, tuck your tailbone. Moving through this more traditional variation of cat cow. And then we're going to start to mix things up a little bit. Finish up your next exhale and come back towards a more neutral spine. And then when you exhale, look over to the right side, turn your tailbone over to the right side. Inhale to the center, exhaling to the left, turning your tailbone and your nose over. And then inhale to the center, exhale, curl over to the right. Inhale to the center, exhale, curl over to the left. And then inhale to the center, exhale over to the right. So one more time, over to the left, following your breath. And then see if you can make some circles in the spine. So maybe you kind of roll things around. Maybe you roll your whole body around if that feels good to you. And then roll in the other direction. Then you're going to take your right foot up outside of your right hand. So you might get it up a bit and then kind of scooch the foot up. You can come up onto your fingertips and then make some circles around in your hip. Now, if your back knee is a little bit tender, you're just going to make a really small circle. You can see I'm kind of barely moving. If you're feeling good about it, though, you can always make a bigger circle around your hips. So I'm getting a little bit more movement in. You can still get some good. Uh, hip relaxing or hip working out with a small hip circle, but a big one is open to you as well. Go a few times in the opposite direction. Doesn't need to be exactly even. And then you're going to slide that right foot back so it comes back a little bit more. You're going to come down and sit on the outside of your left foot or left hip. Sorry, that's a hip be weird. So let the left leg extend however it likes. This top leg is just bent over. I'm kind of letting myself roll. So I've got a really big rotation on this top leg. It's fairly non-specific. You're going to feel it on the outside of this thigh. Notice where it feels tense. Offer yourself some softness wherever it's tense. And then this top leg, you're just gonna go ahead and slide it back and come onto your hands and knees. I'm gonna face this way just because it's weird to face away from you when I go into that second movement. Just go ahead and take your left foot outside of your left hand. And you're either gonna stay in with small hip circles where you just kind of roll your pelvis around without really moving that back knee, or you can take yourself into bigger hip circles, just choosing something that is appropriate for your body moving in a way that you should be moving today. You go in the other direction for a few rounds. And then you're gonna take this left foot, slide it back a little bit, and then you're gonna adjust so that you're on the outside of the right hip. So the right hand's kind of supporting you. This foot might have to slide out a little bit. It's fairly inexact, just rotating this leg open, getting a big stretch to the outside of this hip. Big breath in, big breath out. Then you're gonna start to unwind this leg. This time we're gonna go onto our backs. Go ahead and slide yourself down. Find the soles of your feet on the floor, your back resting comfortably on the mat. And just let yourself settle into the floor, coming back to that foundation, that safe held feeling.
And then let your right knee only drop over to the right. And you can lean over a little bit. Try to keep your left leg mostly up. Just want to reduce this inner right thigh. If you don't feel anything about this stretch, if this isn't enough for you, if you've got a lot of space in the inner thighs, open both legs. For many of us, though, just one leg is going to be enough to relax this inner thigh space. Stay there for another full breath. If you've got both legs open, you might decide to give yourself a little break at some point if it becomes kind of intense. For those of us who only have the one leg, go ahead and lift your right leg up and then roll your left leg down. And you do kind of like lean over towards the leg that you drop, but then the hip that might have lifted up a little bit, gently, slowly over time, see if you can relax that hip back down. yourself about another two breaths. And start to take that left leg up and take your arms open like a cactus shape or a nice open Y. And then roll your knees over towards the right, both of them over to the right. And then let them slowly move over towards the left. It doesn't have to be smooth. And make sure that you find that soft belly space as you exhale, just letting your body roll into more of a twist. Letting things glide side to side. Kind of moving with your breath, inhaling to the center and exhale over towards the left. Inhale to the center and exhale over towards the right. Take another couple of breaths to even out whatever movement you've been doing. You might finish up this round. Do whatever you have to do to get back to rolling over towards the left side one more time and then come back to the center. And take your right leg up in the air and make some circles around your ankle, kind of moving the toes around and then moving it around in the other direction. And then placing your right ankle on your left knee, you can stay here, maybe gently pressing the thighs forward, especially that right thigh. Or you can take the right arm in between the legs and hold onto your left thigh. Maybe if you're not getting a lot of uh, space opening up in the hip, if your hips are just as open as they're going to be today, then focus on this as an opportunity to enjoy your breath. One more breath in. Deep breath out. Release your left foot down. Leave the right ankle on the left knee if you can. You're going to drop your legs over towards the left side. Maybe the left or the right foot is on the floor and the right knee is pointing more up. If this feels no good in your hip, you're just going to roll that knee down a little bit. You're resting a little bit more on the big toe edge of the foot. It's a little bit more of a cross legged twist. If that's still too much, just slide your right knee on top of your left knee. So both legs are bent, still twisting. Maybe you open your right arm up and think about that belly softening to roll the right shoulder open more. One more breath in. Big breath out. Start to release your right foot, come back to the center. And then take your left leg up and roll around the ankle bones a bit, drawing circles with the toes. 
and draw those circles in the other direction. And flexing your foot and taking your left ankle onto your right knee, staying there, gently pressing that left thigh forward to rotate the hip or taking the left arm in between the legs, holding the right leg up to rotate the hip and then start to relax places you have tension. Seeing if you can move away from discomfort. Maybe that's changing what you're doing. Maybe that's just finding some ways to relax and focus on the breath. One more full round of breath. Relax your left or right foot down. You're going to take the left foot and tilt that shape over. You can leave the knee up. You can slide it across or let both legs stack. Find something that works for your body today that gives you what you need out of this twist. Find a place where perhaps you can let that left arm open up, let the left collarbone open up and the belly softens. Two more breaths. And start to unwind your twist. Come back to the center. And then you're gonna bring your knees into your chest and rock yourself up. Take your time getting there. I'm gonna bring the legs towards each other. Hold the backs of your thighs. I've got my toes lifted and then send the backs of your ears up. Let your collarbones open. Keep the spine long. And then see if you can keep the spine long while also softening the belly back. So that you can inhale, feel the backs of the ears lift up. And then as you exhale, you're gonna turn over towards the right, opening the right arm. Let the belly soften back without rounding the back. And right? still long, relax that right collarbone. And then inhale to the center. And as you exhale, you're going to twist over towards the left, softening the belly, reaching that collarbone back, and then inhale to the center. You always have the option of lifting the legs up if you want to challenge yourself more, really to squeeze those thighs together if that's the case. Maybe you leave the feet down, but you don't hold on to your legs. You can reach your arm forward. Keep squeezing those thighs together, whether or not you're holding the legs, whether or not you've got the feet up. See if you can give one more round. Exhale, softening the belly into that twist, and then coming back to the center and relaxing. Open your knees, feet more towards each other, and just let yourself round forward in a way that is soft and Restful, just maybe giving yourself an opportunity to catch your breath. Give yourself one more exhale. And we'll move from here into child's pose or into puppy dog pose. So it doesn't matter how far those hips go back, find a place to rest. I'm settling back here. And take both hands over towards the right edge of your mat, though, so you get a little bit more stretch along the outside of your left rib cage. One more exhale. And take the left hand and the right hand over towards the left side of the mat. Notice if your hips went uneven, if you can relax those hips back, feel the outside of your right ribs open up. Take inhale. Exhale. And then coming back to the center. We're going to bring ourselves forward onto our bellies. Go ahead and lift yourself up, wiggle the legs back, lower yourself down. Be a little bit more wiggling in the legs back. 
and then reach the hands back. You can reach them out on your own or hold hands with yourself. Pick whatever version of locust pose Shalabhasana feels good to you, and then go ahead and lift yourself up. Legs might lift. It's up to you. Just make sure those legs are long. Feel the collarbones opening and the heart leading out and forward. One more inhale. Exhale, soften down. Take the hands in, push yourself up. We're gonna come back to downward facing dog. Next place will be a wide legged forward fold. So you know we're going there if you need to not be in down dog for any reason, but if you can be in down dog, working on some strength and bone density in the wrists and in the palms and in the outsides of the shoulders, relaxing your heels down. Give yourself another breath in. Give it a sigh. And then we'll come up, feet towards hands and hands towards feet. Bring your feet wider than you usually do. So you've got a little bit more of a wide fold. Maybe you have your knees bent, see if you can relax the back of your neck. And then bend more into your left leg. Take your right hand up to your hip. Maybe look over towards the right. You should get a nice stretch on this outer thigh. And then take the right hand down. You might be holding more like your shin than the floor. You're gonna bend your right leg more. Take your left hand to your hip. And then look over to the left. I feel a little bit more of that twist, that outer hip stretch. And then come down and forward, bend your knees so you can keep the back soft as you bring yourself up to standing. And then you're gonna bring the feet in together to touch. Go ahead and lift yourself up. Interlace your fingers, press your palms up, and they're just slightly in front of you. Get a little bit taller as you take your next inhale, and then exhale, side bend over towards the right and push down into your left foot. Inhale to the center, exhale, side bending over towards the left, push down the right foot. Inhale to the center, exhale, side bend over towards the right. Inhale to the center, get taller in the middle, side bend over towards the left. And keep going one more round each side, really try to push into the foot that's opposite of the way you're bending. And then take it back up. We're gonna release your arms down, wiggle your shoulders out a little bit. And then keep your feet together. We're gonna sit back into chair pose. So you wanna have your hips back behind you, make sure that you can lift your toes so your weight's all the way back on your heels. And you're gonna take your uh, left hand, place the back of your hand on the outside of your knee. And then you're gonna take your right arm and open it up. Now it's really hard to get the arms at six o'clock here, especially without letting that back knee go forward. So you wanna keep those knees in line. Don't worry about how getting your body into six o'clock can you open up the collarbones and soften your belly as you do it? One more breath out. And then come back to the center. Go ahead and stand yourself up. Give yourself a moment to relax in the body. I'll face this way for this one. And to keep your feet back, you're gonna lean your hips back. And as you slide the outside of your right hand, I know I'm not quite mirroring you, you just wanna make sure that that knee doesn't come forward. So you have to squeeze those knees together and you're gonna lift the heart up, reach that arm up, and then you're gonna open those collarbones as you soften that belly in. Good. Big breath in. Big breath out. And then come out of that twist, stand yourself up. Wiggle things out. And then you're gonna take the legs out pretty wide. Coming into warrior two, turn your right toes out and then turn your left toes in. Bend into that right leg and then lean out over it. Take your elbow down. And we're gonna reach the arm up here. Now we wanna let the lower ribs soften and let the belly soften back. Push in the back foot and reach the backs of your ears out. You should feel long across your skeleton structure, the whole back side of the body. And the chest reach up that top hand. Exhale. Inhale, now reach that arm up and overhead, keeping that belly softened in so you have more power to reach out to these fingertips. And then relax the arm down. Go ahead and bring yourself back up and switch towards the other side. 
Now take the left toes all the way over, turn those right toes in, bend into the left leg, open the arms, and then reach out over that left leg. Make sure that the knee and that toes face in the same line, come to the elbow and reach your arm up. And it's really easy to kind of let the arm fall back, right? So I'm gonna instead lift my shoulder up to the arm. I can see it right up there. I'm softening the belly and so I can feel the back side of the body expanding. The bones are lengthening and getting strong. On your next inhale, reach that arm up and over your nose, keeping the bone structure strong, getting a little bit longer through that side. One more exhale. Relax your arm. Come on up. Now we're going to turn back over towards the right side, but this time coming into warrior one. So you have to adjust your feet to get a little bit wider. You're going to bend into the front knee. Go ahead and lift your arms up. Feel your spine getting long. Stay long as you take your arms down and back. You can leave them as airplane wings or hold your hips or hold hands behind your back. You want to keep that front knee facing forward and then lean your heart forward towards your thigh. You can stop a little bit forward. Got to push down strong in that front foot. Maybe you do drop your torso down towards that thigh a little bit more. Make sure that your hip isn't gliding out to the side. One more exhale, and then draw your belly and stand yourself up, release your hands. And we're gonna switch to the other side. So you can step one foot back, one foot forward, turn around on your mat, just wherever you go to have the legs in the opposite uh, position. And you wanna have that front knee bent, toes face forward, back toes are in, so you can have that leg straight. Take the arms up, big inhale. Exhale, keep the heart lifted as you reach your arms back. Hold your hips, hold your hands, or reach your arms back on their own. Let that heart stretch forward over the front leg. Make sure that your hip isn't gliding to the side. You want to pull it towards the back foot. Find some way to relax your neck. Stay strong in the breath, strong in your feet. One more exhale. Draw your belly in. Stand yourself up. Release your hands, we're gonna step both feet up. Wiggle things out a little bit. Our standing balance today is going to be eagle pose. So you know, we've obviously got those um, options in the arms where you can have the hands up, you can hold behind your back. You can keep your elbows together and don't worry about wrapping them up. We'll find something that works in your arms. See if you can stay focused on the legs. So you might come towards a wall just in case you wanna have something nearby. Just pick a leg wrap it on top, and as you sit your hips back, squeeze those inner thighs together, feel your hips moving back. See what you can do about putting less focus on this foot. Even if it's on the floor, you just make sure that it's your other foot, the foot that's all the way on the floor, that's really supporting you. And then if you've got the wrapping of the arms, it'll be whew, the other arm on top. And you're gonna soften in the belly, get stronger in the heart. Feel the collarbones opening and the elbows pull away from you. The weight is back on the heel. One more breath out. Start to unwind things. Maybe you don't put the foot down until you uncross it. Reach your arms up a little bit longer in all those spaces you just squished. And relax your arms down. And then wrap up the other side. I wasn't specific about which one you do because it doesn't really matter. You want to bend into your bottom legs. So you're squeezing the legs together. Try to put a little bit less weight on the foot that's just touching for balance. Wrap the other arm on top. You might hug. You might not have them wrapped. But soften that belly back so your hips go back more and then lift your heart. Feel your collarbones open. I know they're squished, but it is, it's maybe possible to feel a little bit more space coming open at those collarbones. One more exhale. Maybe you don't put the foot down until you unwind your legs. And then you find both feet down, both arms up, big inhale. And exhale, take the hands down. We're gonna widen the legs out again. This time, 
Toes are only open as much as you can open your knees. And you're going to come down into this Buddha squat, this um, goddess squat. And let the upper body be soft. Pinky toe edges of the feet root down. Your upper butt drops down. And there's a lot of power in the legs when you try to find the softness in the upper body. Building up this steady foundation in the lower body so that we can try to rise up from there, finding softness. One more breath in. Exhale. Stand it on up, release your arms down. You're going to turn the heels back so the feet are a little bit wider, the toes are forward. Come into a fold that feels good to you. So maybe you just kind of hang out, maybe you bend into the knees, maybe you take the hands all the way down. You can do a little bit of swaying, maybe you reach over for opposite legs or something. Put your arms behind your back, whatever it is, like make this forward fold good for you. Feel some of that creative dancey kind of feeling in your spine if you're up for it. Take another full round of breath or so, even out what you've been doing and then finding softness in the knees, strength of the feet, hands to the hips, strong belly, slowly take yourself back up. And then you're gonna bring your feet in, bring your feet together, squeeze those inner thighs up. We're gonna lift both arms and then take a little side bend over towards the right, lift up to the center. A little side bend over towards the left. Lift to the center, separate your feet about hip width distance apart and fold forward. If you can let the spine be long, if you can let your belly soften, maybe you bend your legs to bring your torso a little bit closer. And then since you're already halfway down there towards the floor, just start to take yourself on down. Doesn't have to be graceful or specific or anything. If you had a pillow that you were sitting on, go ahead and grab that. I'm gonna come onto your seat, bringing your feet out in front of you, finding just like crisscross applesauce, just your easy cross-legged seat. It could of course have both legs out in front of you, not cross, whatever seems better on you. But if you did cross your legs, whatever way was normal for you to cross your legs, cross them the other way because this is probably a little bit more unusual for you. <laughs> and then you're just going to go over towards one leg, seeing how far out over that leg your body is willing to take you. One more exhale, soften your belly because you're twisting a bit. And then bring your hands back. And go out over the other leg. And I'm not directly over the thigh, I'm maybe more a little bit more on the inside of the thigh. Soften your belly, let yourself gently turn inwards. And then start to walk your hands back up. And then you're going to come forward walking yourself out as much as feels good to your body, which might not be very much. Maybe you just go like a little bit and you're here and you're like, that's a good stretch. I can breathe here. I feel good about this in my practice. But if you want to go more, take another three deep breaths. And start to walk your hands back up towards you. And then you're gonna either leave your legs how they are if they're not wound or crossed, or if they are crossed, go ahead and cross them the other way, which is the way that's probably a little bit more use, um, usual in your body. And then go over towards one side and fold inwards. It's kind of gently on the inside of that thigh in a place that feels reasonable to you. Maybe you move it in a little bit more if that's too much over to the side, just listen to yourself. And 
Again, breathing in and breathing out. Start to walk yourself up, turn yourself over towards the other leg. Softening your belly when you exhale. And then walking yourself back so that you can come forward once again. For many of us, there's more space on this side, just it's like the one that you're used to going to. So your body has some familiarity already with being in this space. Maybe all of a sudden the other one was better and you just kind of sit with that, breathe through that. I'll be here for another couple of breaths. One more big inhale. A big exhale. Start to lift yourself back up. You're going to take your right leg and extend it out. You can always extend both legs if that felt better to you, but often having this one leg in is a little bit easier. We're gonna go out over a straighter leg. So maybe you get in really close. Maybe you hold on to your leg somewhere. Maybe you just take your hands out and support yourself as you soften your back. One more breath in. Big breath out. And start to lift yourself back up. You're gonna take the right hand on the inside of the leg. Maybe you walk the fingertips out a bit and then reach that left arm up and over. So you get a long space on that left side body. Take a breath in. Soften your belly in as you exhale, reach out more. And then lift yourself up. We're gonna leave this uh, left hand in somewhere close to you. Lift the right knee or the left knee up, pull it in. Maybe you cross the leg over. You're going to hold on to it. Lift up tall. We already stretch out this side. Use that and then exhale, soften the belly into this twist. Relax the collarbones open. One more round of breath. And start to relax that twist. Unwind your left leg, probably folding that right one in and then taking yourself out in a fold over the left leg. One more exhale, softening inwards. And start to lift yourself up. I'm gonna leave the left arm in the inside, maybe walk it out a little bit and then reach your right arm up and over your nose. Notice if you have a tendency to let the belly expand outwards instead, let it soften inwards. You're kind of drawing that power into you, releasing more through this top arm. Stay through the exhale. And then lift yourself up. You're going to take your left arm or right arm in close to you, so I'm still lifted. And then take the knee up, maybe you cross the foot over. And you're going to hold on to that leg as you twist over to that side, stay long on both sides of your torso. Soften that belly into the rotation, relax your collarbones open. One more exhale. Then start to release your twist. Uh, unwind your legs. We're going to come down onto our backs. If you've got a pillow around, a folded up towel, couch cushion, um, fold up a sweater, anything. It doesn't have to be big, but kind of squishy enough to elevate your hips a bit. Once you get down onto the floor, you're just going to take this, whatever you've got, and bring it underneath your pelvis. There's a little bit of elevation, just kind of giving some softness and some lift, and that's lifting up 
in our root chakra and also giving a little bit of elevation and kind of like ta-da to this uh, sacral chakra, which is a little bit below your belly button. This creative, sensual space, just kind of lifting it up. Also relaxing the space in the back body. This often feels really good for releasing the lower back, having this gentle lift to the hips. And since you've got something really squishy, I hope it should feel pretty good. If it feels kind of off, maybe the pillow is up too high or maybe it's down too high and it's just your tailbone that's lifting up, I'm gonna just press into your feet, move this around, find a place that feels really good to you. Maybe you let your hands rest down there in that sacral chakra. And let them rest anywhere that is comfortable to you. Taking a few deep breaths. And if you decide as you follow me into this next suggestion that it doesn't feel good on your back, if it doesn't feel good on your body, just come back here and spend a few more breaths here. But if the fronts of your hips have been a little bit tight, you're just going to take one of your legs and extend it forward until it feels good. Hello. And just one of your legs at a time. And it's very gentle. Maybe that I don't want to finish. Just a very soft opening to the front of that hip. And then if you had the one leg open, you'll just switch towards the other side. It should feel very gentle. It might not feel like much of anything at all. It's less of a stretch and more restorative to that space in the body, especially after all of the hip work and twisting we've been doing. And then come back to the center. You're going to take your feet and plant them down on the floor. You're going to lift your hips up and take the pillow up from underneath you. And then reach those arms back, feel your spine lengthening. And then take your arms down by your sides. Still feet bent, you're going to wiggle your shoulders underneath your back, push your feet up, find a low bridge pose. Don't go for a huge one. Kind of engaging the back of the thighs, lengthening the fronts of the thighs. Inhale and exhale. Take it on down. Bring your knees into your chest. Rock it around a little bit. You can cross your ankles if you like it. Just going to massage your back. You're ready, start to open your arms and roll your legs over to one side, finding a twist that feels good to you. Still working through a gentle midsection and open heart, steady breath. One more breath out. And then start to work your way over to a twist on the other side. Letting the belly soften inwards, letting yourself rotate around that center. One more exhale. And then coming back into the middle. And if there's anything else you need to do before Shavasana, going there, you can take Shavasana with legs bent or feet extended. You bring those arms down and give a little wiggle of your shoulder blades towards each other. And settling into this very well-deserved rest.
start to come back to your breath. Come back to your body. And as you get more energy and feel inclined to make any small movements that call to you, also consider ways in which you can find joy and pleasure in this body and in this life and the rest of the day and the days to come. Start to bring yourself up, I'm sorry, roll over to your side in gratitude for your practice, turning inwards, and then start to make your way up to a comfortable seat. Once you get up to that seat, bringing your hands together at your heart. Lifting your heart up, sealing the practice with an ohm. Bowing down to the love and light within each of our hearts. Namaste. Good week as best as you all can have in the circumstances. Yeah. Yeah. The good news. The good news I think is is that I think I'm getting more used to it. I figure that's the best you can do. I had to cancel my trip to San Francisco. So you know, that was kind of a readjustment. So now I'm here, better or worse. I hope it goes good for you today. Now, one other question about that background you've got. I see the tea lights. What are the other things? They're air plants. Oh, you told me air plants. Mm -hmm. Very nice. I like it even better each time I see it. All right, have a good one. Were there only three of us today? I uh, Sue no. was in here a little bit ago, but I think she popped up. I took a longer shavasana or something. Okay. All right. Well, take care of yourself. All right. We'll do. Take care, Marsha. Thank you. Uh, bye, Marsha. Take care. Bye-bye.